Our hope is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Come, O Lord, our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. we will go unto the altar of God. God give joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now let us make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Because God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. For God formed man to be imperishable. The image of his own nature he made him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, he is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are the consolation and salvation of those who trust in you. In our deepest sorrow and despair, our help is assured because of your love and compassion, so that we may always call upon you and seek your aid. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living, for he fashioned all things that they might have being, and the creatures of the world are wholesome, and there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth, for justice is undying. God formed man to be imperishable. The image of his own nature, he made them. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will extol you, O Lord, for you drew me clear and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime is goodwill. At nightfall, weeping enters in, but with the dawn, rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper, who changed my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, forever will I give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. The second reading is from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you were burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may supply your needs, and that there may be equality. As it is written, whoever had much did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory be to you, Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus, came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, 
My daughter is at the point of death. Please, come lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors, and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, if I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to Jesus, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of the commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion? and weeping. The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him, and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha, whom, which means, Little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around. At that they were utterly astonished. He gave strict orders that no one should know this, and said that she should be given something to eat. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
And as the sun was setting, all those who had any ailment or who were sick with various kinds of diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on each of them and cured them. Words taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke. And Jairus said, Lord, please come lay your hands on her, and she may get well and live. Words taken from today's Holy Gospel, according to Mark. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I am reminded of a story found in the Gospel of Luke of the time when John the Baptist, who was imprisoned by King Herod, sent two of his disciples to Jesus with one simple question. Are you the one who is to come, or do we wait for another? To this Jesus replies, go back and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense in me. Jesus does not tell them to ask others about what they have heard, but tells them to tell John what they have personally seen. They were to give testimony to John of what they witnessed. Of the 37 detailed miracles of Jesus found in the Gospel, 26 are of healing. This does not include the many scriptural passages where it is mentioned that Jesus healed all those who were brought to him. It is interesting that St. Luke, a physician, was to record in his gospel many of the miracles of healing. It is believed that although Luke may have not known Jesus personally, nor was one of the first chosen, as in the case of Matthew and John, both he and Mark, the other two evangelists, traveled with St. Paul, who knew the apostles of Jesus. Many consider the source of the ministry of Jesus to be attributed to St. Matthew, who has been linked with what we know as the Q source for the sayings of Jesus, of which Mark then uses to write his first gospel account of the life in the ministry of Jesus, the Christ. In today's gospel, we hear of two incredible healings, one concerning a woman who had an affliction of menstrual hemorrhaging for 12 years and the raising of the daughter of Jairus from the dead. In both healings, faith and belief in the power of God was the key, just as many of the miracles of Jesus. Modern medicine and pharmacology has addressed some of the ailments that have been described in the Gospels. With transplants being able to help those to see, with institutions such as the Shriners Hospitals help those who are lame, with pharmacology that has helped those who suffer from leprosy cleansed, with ocular implants that help the deaf to hear, no one has been able to find the power to be able to raise the dead. But we do have the good news to be proclaimed to the poor. 
On a side note, in 1972, Dora Kuntz, a psychic healer, and Dolores Krieger, PhD, an RN nurse, and professor of nursing in, at New York University, University, introduced what we know today as the therapeutic touch, or TT. They both were to meet with Oscar Estebani, a world-renowned healer, and they began to establish healing services for the sick after all had seen the positive results of TT. As of 1998, an estimated 100,000 people around the world have been trained in TT. Over 43,000 of these are health care professionals, many of whom use TT in conjunction with traditional medicine, as well as osteopathic, chiropractic, naturopathic, and homeopathic therapies. TT is taught in over 100 colleges, universities, and medical schools. Did you ever bang your, your funny bone or other parts of your body? The first natural reflex is to hold the injured part of the body with one's hands or hand. It has been proven that there is energy that flows from an individual's hands. Did not Jesus, over 2,000 years ago, lay his hands on the sick? Throughout the centuries, it is well known that many people have been healed of their ailments and afflictions in the name and the divine power of Jesus. But the question is asked today, does the Lord still heal? And are miracles still being performed in today's world? I would say to all Christians that healing and miracles are still happening. Jesus was to manifest the power of God in healing and was to transfer this healing power to every Christian believer. He was also to commission his followers to engage in the ministry of healing, just as he did. In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 12, we read the words of Jesus where he said, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do, and greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And did not Jesus also say prior to his ascension, and lo, I am with you always until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters, have you ever prayed for someone's healing? Have you ever laid your hands on a loved one because of your love? and sought the healing in Jesus' name. This is where faith and belief in the Lord becomes the essential part of healing. You know, I believe that our Lord wants to help heal the sick, to help us to help heal the sick. We may not know the will of God for all those afflicted with sickness or illness, but I do believe that the gifts of healing and working of miracles are released by the Holy Spirit, which existed in the early church and are still available to this day to every believer. The ministry of healing is one of the greatest Christian gifts that Jesus gave to the church and continues to give. Even St. Paul makes several references to the ministry of healing in his letters to the Christian church. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, though we may not be able to raise the dead back to life as Jesus did, we are assured 
that Jesus prayed unto the Father. He gave thanks unto the Father, and that in his name, through prayer and belief, we can help to heal and bring others who suffer mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and even physically back to a degree of wholeness in the name and in the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. All that is asked of us is that we have faith and believe in his name. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Let us pray. Return, O Lord, save my life. Rescue me because of your kindness. this offering most holy trinity which we make in remembrance of the passion resurrection 
and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memories we honor here on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may we who offer these gifts look forward to our own resurrection. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, you who gave your Son power to heal and perform signs and miracles, to reveal your love and goodness and your unending love to us, recognizing Jesus as the Lord of all creation, may we rejoice in him as we obey his commandments and his holy word. Therefore, we join with the voices of angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer up to you in the first place for your whole Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our Prime Bishop, and Paul, our Bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. In our prayers this day, let us remember the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed, all those who are still suffering from the coronavirus, and offer prayers not only to them, but also to their families. Let us thank God for all doctors, nurses, first responders, and healthcare workers who strive daily to, to save others. In our deepest prayers, let us remember all abused and neglected children, as well as all abused and neglected animals, and all victims of violence, both here and abroad. Let us pray to Almighty God that he would watch over and protect all those who serve in our armed forces. And dear Lord, we ask that you would bless all your presence whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer, or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
We ask, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing unto yourself, that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries and would spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, and Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in the back of the nose. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, Revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, 
and in following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, is also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. For forever and ever, Amen. may the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment or condemnation, though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy, our saving master. Awaken in all of us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen.
And now, my brothers and sisters, let us offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray, most loving Jesus. I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, what we have received on your lips, may we receive mentally, and may this noble gift become to us an everlasting gift. May your body, O Lord, which I have received, and your blood which I have drunk, cling to my innermost being, and grant that no sin remain in me, and only so many sacraments have nourished, who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from their faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, may your death and resurrection be the hope of those in the grave. Through this Eucharist, may we and all who have gone before us rise up to meet you in your heavenly kingdom. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all for whom we have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life or the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire nor by man's willing it, but by God. 
the Word, became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks, Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, I wish to thank you for sharing with us this morning's service. It is my thoughts and prayers that God would bless all of us, keep all of us healthy and safe as we pray not only for one another, but for all our dear loved ones. We will conclude this morning with the offering of a final prayer for all the intentions of which we mentioned during the canon as well as for our own personal intentions. And we will conclude with a final prayer for the repose of the souls of all faithful departed loved ones. May God be with all of you until we come together again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.